We have been waiting years for some very good news from Tesla Semi, and it looks like we finally got it. Uh, it has appeared at a big show in Germany, and people are getting not just their hands on it and in it, but getting rides as well, and getting some real in-depth information from a variety of presentations. And that's what we're gonna talk about today with my good buddy Herbert from Brighter. Check him out if you haven't. I know you have, but check him out again anyway, because he's got great stuff. I'm Brian, welcome to Futuraza. So Herbert, you saw the news. You've seen it. We've all been watching it feverishly. It's very exciting. Uh, if we look at this is this is a, a week or two old now. But uh, Zangler, who is out in Sparks, Nevada, uh, regularly. I don't know where he actually lives, but in the greater Reno area, he's been seeing more and more semis rolling out, and it's. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're seeing that the pilot line is actually producing semis. And then about a month ago, we saw that they were that they had shipped one or more over to Germany. We saw them uh, show up in the drone footage over Giga Berlin. And then, of course, yesterday we saw Yawn of the Universe. Holy frunk. I just became <laughs> one of the first ever regular people to ride along <laughs> in a driving Tesla semi. Here's a thread and new details I learned. It is already fully ready for European roads as it is now. So we're going to pause there and tell me, what does that mean and what's the significance? <laughs> well, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible to create a semi emitting electric vehicles. This is all fake. It's not true. Uh, Elon himself even replied saying, wasn't it supposed to be impossible? Here they are. And then this morning, Dan, so yesterday, Dan Priestley, Tesla Semi executive for Tesla, Tesla was in a presentation in Europe, and that's where you saw uh, Jan go and actually physically be there to watch the videos the, and create the videos and actually get in the Tesla Semi. But all the news is fantastic. This morning, Dan Priestley uh, was on stage and he talked about the success of the pilot with Pepsi. And, uh, you know, he told, he said to people that Pepsi, Everybody thinks it's just Frito-Lay, which is chips, which just means that it's very light loads. He goes, no, Pepsi is a beverage company. This is very, very expensive. And he said, it's, it's incredible. There's like plus 50 plus uh, deployments of 50 plus semis already happening. And all sorts of different long range, uh, long haul, short haul, heavy, not heavy. And it's performing really, really well. So it's looking like that the ROI is there, that these uh, semis can drive for um, what is that? A hundred miles, and so it's um, it's crazy. Hundred miles on a hundred kilowatt hours, it's and just, yeah, mm -hmm. and is that good? Well, if we go back and look at uh, when Tesla had announced it, they said with less than two kilowatt hours per mile of energy mm -hmm. consumption. That's the original target was two. They have beaten it by double. I mean, they are half that figure. Yeah. Uh, they're now targeting just over one. And a lot of the competition I've seen is in the like 1.43 range. So this is very it's exciting crazy. stuff. It yeah, is. Elon just uh, posted this morning that it's, uh, he thinks he can get them down to 1.2 kilowatt hours per mile, as you're saying. So it's, it's crazy. It is bonkers. And what you were just saying is that Tesla team only had to make a bunch of minor changes to details, wheel covers, etc. This doesn't mean semi is going to enter the European markets right now. Tesla's for focusing on ramping North America first. But if they wanted, they could drive in Europe right now, as is. So they've developed uh, a bunch of things, independent front suspension, exceptionally strong regen, that means the truck doesn't need to use its brakes as much. Crazy. And this is the European development platform. He also confirmed that the driver confirmed that they have the space saved with the metal frame behind the cab for the sleeper version. So this big empty, this big space back in the back of the semi uh, there right now, it's just open, empty space. If you, you can see from behind, it's just uh, basically a aero sh shroud that gives it better uh, wind a better wind profile, better drag profile. So the space is available for a sleeper cab at the appropriate time. A couple points I want to make here. So first of all, take a look at that video. Mm -hmm. Let's keep playing that video. That's the semi driving around inside a factory, a closed enclosure of a, you know, like an organization. So many companies can now do this. They can drive their Tesla semis, which are electric vehicles, into the factory as opposed to a diesel. You can't do that with diesels. Number two, you know, 
Tesla is famous for design for manufacturability, right? They have they have knowledge, they have factories, they have the skill to build uh, automobiles at scale, um, you know, at speed. But what they've shown here today is that they've also designed for going going global. What what they created the first time, the, the first thing that they created was already with an idea of, of being able to launch this in Europe. You know, Europe has many different kind of laws and restrictions. Well, they made sure that it's, at, it's able to do that. So with just minor changes to it to modify, it, it's ready to go. So it, I think they said that it's going to go scale in Europe in 2026, but next year will be uh, scaling in, in the U.S. And what a huge deal it is. The big thing to learn with, with these kinds of vehicles is it doesn't matter what they cost uh, because they can be extremely expensive and someone will still have a use case for it at that price. And then you move down the market from there just like we've seen with mega packs, just like we've seen with every vehicle model they've released there. You can see the inside of the sleeper cab, uh, the area where a sleeper cab could go. The shape of it is still uh, adequate that you could do that. So there's, yeah, this is going to be a big deal. Nobody was allowed to film the ride itself, uh, mm -hmm. but they did get to go on the rides. Uh, so I'm definitely not super, super jealous of that. But if anyone thinks I might be jealous, they can make me feel better by getting me their plus one <laughs> to the hottest ticket of the century, RoboTaxi a day. Yeah. So yeah, the ride itself was smooth. Visibility is great. Turning radius, similar to a Model Y. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I've heard uh, comments that one of what Dan Priestley said in his presentation was that uh, when they created this... Uh, you know, this, this, uh, semi, one of the criteria that they use was driver acceptance, uh, driver kind of appreciation of the, you know, the, you know, comfort and the, this was through the roof, uh, the excitement by drivers, they love it. They feel like it's so easy to drive inside a city and they feel like they they're comfortable so that, uh, they said something like Tesla said to we, really tried to make sure that there's a lot of um and they didn't explain what they are but like things that the driver would appreciate and love right you know yes. the delight for the driver and apparently that was through the roof drivers love this it's easy to drive it's got all the modern tech it's it's a spaceship except bigger than the spaceships you and i drive <laughs> uh, um, if we look at there's an article here uh, the implications for the automotive industry uh, it's more than just a corporate maneuver it symbolizes a shift in the paradigm of the heavy duty transportation industry with stringent emission regulations and increased emphasis on sustainability the adoption could revolutionize freight logistics and significantly reduce the carbon footprint of the sector so when they say yeah. freight logistics what what we i think the the key the key turning point there is when does it cross over from uh truck long haul into rail because mm. if it can lower the price that's why the 1.2 kilowatt hour per mile is so important because if they can lower the price per mile and of course all the other criteria it could actually displace and disrupt rail this is how big this could be. And if you have like a convoy of these, think of it like a rail, a train uh, flying and driving through a platoon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be exciting to see it happen. Um, so now we can go into a little bit of speculation. Where do you think we're going to see it? Is it going to be built in an expansion of Giga Berlin? I don't know. This is your stuff. <laughs> it, I, would your say, I would say, I would say... I would say it is. I would say okay. it is. We can see from the factory in going up in uh, Sparks, Nevada, it doesn't require a vast amount of space. Building a semi is not as complicated as building a car in terms of the assembly line itself. You'll notice it's it does not have unibody construction, which which requires a, a, a kajillion welders. It doesn't have giga castings because they wouldn't be they would be redundant in terms of the uh, ladder rail system, the ladder frame they already have that that is already that already works for semis. There's no need to reinvent that particular aspect. You still need all that structure there, and it just makes sense. So this is going to be an exciting development, and there's going to be a lot to keep an eye on. Uh, and I think if you're the competition you're worried and if you're not worried you're not paying attention what i would like to know is if the uh 
executive at Mercedes who said he's pretty sure physics works the same in the U.S. as Germany, uh, has determined which physics those are <laughs> and, and, and just what kind of a genius he is. I know Bill Gates was also deeply, deeply skeptical that this could ever be made. And now we're seeing other manufacturers getting better on their range, getting a little bit more efficient on their drivetrains, their total uh, yeah. kilowatt hours per mile. And uh, I'm wondering if we will ever see, ever see a correction on that bit of genuine stupidity. Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's true, right? That there was a delay in the Tesla Semi. You and I have done shows of a year and a half ago, and we were so excited about it. You uh, very much about Tesla Semi. And then, you know, nothing happened. <laughs> we were like reporting every time Pepsi has got one or two or five. You know, I think it took it took some time. Now, I don't know why this took this long for them. At the end of the day, the pilot with Tesla, uh, with Pepsi is a huge success. They're able to show you my metric, you know, 50 trucks plus, different kinds of range, different kinds of load weight. Um, how far? Well, I think one of the trucks, I can't remember the actual number. Do you remember this? Qu quarter million. Quarter million miles already. or And, and so at it's- At full load. At full, full load. weight, yeah. And so it's showing you that it can, it can, it's durable, it can last a long time. It has all these benefits. It's a massive win. And I mentioned that um, uh, driver acceptance was one of the key things. It's one thing if you're forcing somebody to do something that they don't want to drive in. And in fact, oh, yeah. they love it. They want it. And many of them have said that once you've driven an electric vehicle, specifically a Tesla Semi, you're not going to go back to diesel, is what they said. <laughs> We're just not going to do it anymore. And so it's a win across the board. This is Pepsi. Now they've got the expansion plant or the factory that's going to go at scale. They repeated that twice, that this is the year they're going to make 50,000 Tesla Semis in a factory. Do you remember that, Brian? I, I don't recall the exact number. I thought it was 50,000. So we'll see. Um, yeah. So there's two things on that. There's a story I saw a month or so ago. There's a police department that has one Tesla Model Y and all the officers fight over it <laughs> yeah. because that's the one they want to drive. It's smoother, it's Speed. quieter, it's faster, it's safer. Yeah. And then in terms of freight logistics, one of the things that came up in one of the articles was saying that Tesla has designed it in such a way that there is no stopping for fuel. The only time you need to recharge is at a mandatory break period or at end or end. At either terminus, they can just have it charging while it's being offloaded. Uh, so there are, from it's a business out. perspective, that just yeah. makes sense. So guys, in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? I don't know. I don't know, Herbert. That's why I need them to tell me. Uh, head on over to Brighter. See what he's up to. Uh, he's got some absolutely fantastic stuff. The work he does on robotics with CERN and Dr. Scott Walter. Truly amazing. Uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, stay tuned in Juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in Europe. I don't know.